today is we've got two more Marukus and we're going to try and do a comparison video between the two. Now I must say straight off the bat that the videos are becoming very very popular. I don't know everything. I purely am showing people these different model of Marukus. I want people to get the passion that I've got for these older guns. They need a hell of a lot of respect and for a long time they haven't got it. They had a stigma attached to them, mainly from the Browning B25 crowd of people that, as I've said in past videos, people want to say what gun, one gun is better than another gun and Maruka have had a stigma about them for about 40 plus years in the fact that they aren't as good as a Browning B25. Well, they're every bit as good as a Browning B25. To say they're better is rude because mechanically they are near identical gun. There is, there is slightly different actions out there and as we spoke in some of the earlier videos, mechanically inside, these are, these are, these are completely different to a, a Browning B25. But what I'm trying to do with the videos and what I'm trying to show people is I'm trying to show the very, very slight differences between the two guns. An actual, an actual rundown of the models that Maruku made is impossible. It's just not there. The serial number history, it's not there. The, the, the different designs, the different engravings, it's just not there. It, it, it's, a, it's a feel thing. You have to look at the guns, you have to see what's different about them. And what we're trying to do with these videos is we're trying to show people the differences between the two. So what we've got here is two Marukus of 3700-3800 vintage. The gun that's closest to the camera here, we've already done a comparison video with this gun and a later gun. This gun is 1975 and this gun is 1973. So what I'm going to do with Paul, I'll get the camera over here, we're going to show how the guns differed but stayed the same in a space of two years. So do you want to bring the camera over Paul yeah. please? And uh, we'll start showing. So what we said, what I said in the earlier videos is this engraving differs ever so slightly to the 1973 gun here. Now, if you could go in on that engraving there, Paul. The 73 one first. So, this engraving here, Paul, this is, without doubt, 100% a Maruku superior grade, I believe it is. Now, the only reason that I know it's a superior grade is because I've got one of these guns in its original cardboard box from the Maruku factory to say that it's a superior grade. Therefore, superior. Just come out a little bit, Paul. Yep. And if we can, we'll see. And these are the places you need to be looking here. Can I get that in the light a little bit? Yep. So here on the front of the action, yep. the engraving, and here on the forend iron is the word I'm looking for. The engraving is the same, basically, on yep. both guns. Round the hinge pin here, We've got a rose. It's not a rose. It's trying to emulate a flower, basically. And I think they've made a, a very good job of doing that. Yeah. The reason that I'm paying particular attention here, Paul, and on this one here, is when we move on to the high-end stuff I keep talking about, you will you will have to look at the two. Yeah. Are they, are they quite the same, or is it... No, they're, they're slightly different. As I said, Paul, because they are hand done, each one is hand done. Yeah. As I said with the very early videos, you've got what's called artistic license. Okay. So one man will engrave, will use the graver and it will go a little bit deeper. One man will go a little bit shallower. It's, it's like looking at a painting someone's drawn. You can see the brush, brush strokes. Now yeah. I'm not an art critic and never will be what i'm trying to show people is the fact that this engraving in its own way is art okay it's an yeah. art form 
So we've got the differences between the two there, Paul. Now, again, what I keep saying is you have to look very, very closely. And let's just, if you can come up, Paul, and just show these two yeah. stocks here. I've moved it a bit over here. Basically, this Maruku here, the 1975 gun, has got Maruku standard ski sporting stock where the comb rolls away, basically. You are going to have, and I haven't measured it, it's going to be two and a quarter inches a drop at the front of the comb here, Paul. Yep. And at the back of the comb here, it's going to be two and a half inches a drop. That's measured off the top rib, okay? Basically, yep. you put a straight edge along the top rib and you measure down. So this has got Maruku's standard, as I say, ski sporting stock where the stock rolls away. It's higher at the front than it is at the back. It's got a particular name for it, Paul. Uh, one of the very old books that I read, they called it a, rotisser, a rotisserary stock or a hogsback stock. Now, what you've got on the slightly earlier gun is you've got a parallel comb. This is two and a quarter inches at the front, two, a, two and a quarter inches at the back. Yeah, I've, I mean, looking at the camera, I can see the differences between the two so quite if we, easily. If we put this gun on top of this one, Paul, uh, yeah, what's that way around? And as I keep saying, don't knock them against each other. So that's as straight as I can get. You should be able to see that this yeah. is parallel yep. and this rolls away ever so slightly. That's it. Now, I've put both of these guns up to my shoulder, and with the 14-inch stock that they've got, they feel, to me, very, very similar. It's, it's just... We're just showing you the differences, basically. With the Marukus that you will see, the vast majority of them, if they haven't had a recoil pad put on them aftermarket, the vast majority that you're going to see are going to have a Bakelite pad and a white line. Yeah. Okay. And that was a Maruku one. That's a proper yeah. Maruku one, yes, Paul. There we go. Yeah. So the vast majority are going to look like that. You do get some higher grade ones that have got pistol grip caps on here, okay, with white lines. Uh, we will move on to, to those guns in later videos. I've also been been talking to, to people quite quite seriously about these guns, and, and, and somebody said to me earlier on today that I've got a fetish for Marukus. Now I've got a passion <laughs> for them, and I absolutely love them. The videos that we're doing are to talk to like-minded people, you must also remember that they are done very quickly, as you can tell by the videos. They are, they are, they're just, they're for fun. They're done for fun. In comments from the other videos, a lot more people are starting to, to love them as well. People have always loved them, Paul. But what they've had to do is because there's been a stigma about Marukus being Japanese. What do Maruku know about making guns? They don't make guns. They've had a stigma about them because they were so-called a lesser make. So people have always liked Maruku's pool. They've just had to keep it a little bit quiet, <laughs> all right? I am not a quiet person. So what we've got with the qualities of the wood pool is we've got two very similar qualities of wood. Yeah. They are, they're nice, they're figured, they're not outstanding by any shape, any stretch of the imagination. Well, what you can start to see, Paul, is you've got on this gun, the 1975 gun, you will start to see that the Maruku flat top checkering, we're, yeah. we're starting to lose it basically. As I've said in earlier videos, flat top checkering is harder to do. So a way of getting the price down was to move over to standard checkering. You will see on this gun here, which is the 1973 gun, you will see that we've still got our original Maruku flat top checkering on it. So we've got Maruku's flat top checkering on this one, Paul. Now, what I've been talking to people, and I've been showing them several different guns recently, Maruku don't tend to put fancy wood on their guns. They were not looking for fancy wood but they do put some particularly nice engraving. And as I've said to you, Paul, 
the engraving is like artwork, basically. Yeah. It's unsigned artwork that even if we went to the Maruku factory, I would hazard a guess they wouldn't be able to tell us who engraved for them, who was doing what. Well, what's nice about these two guns as well, Paul, and if I roll them over, which yeah. I pointed out to you a minute ago, we will see how, if we focus up on the top of the action yeah, here, both Paul, together, yep. Yeah, you will see that this engraving on this one, even though it's an, uh, a later gun, the engraving on here is a bit thicker yeah. as opposed to this gun here, okay? Yep. You will also notice that the engraving on the top lever, now, if you look at, I believe it's the Japanese royal family, they have got a crest and it's a particular flower, basically, uh, I can't quite remember what it's called. I'm sure somebody will find it in the comments for me below. This is trying to emulate a Japanese flower, basically, yep. on the on the top of both of those guns there. Now let's let's uh, and what uh, what I'm not getting across in the videos is we're missing so much off of these guns, so so much. Now if you look at the ribs between the two, Paul. Yep. Even though this, uh, they're around the wrong way actually. Let, let me spin the guns around. Oh, let me spin the guns around and we can look at the serial numbers between the two. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, the Maruku serial, serial number system bears absolutely no resemblance to any serial number system other than Maruku's. Can you pull that one over? And I'll pull this one over. Right. We really want to look at the serial numbers. Yep. So on the earlier gun, we've got a 60,800, 60,000, 60,000, 8,201, yep. basically. Now, I've looked, and that one is a 676614. Now, these guns only are separated by about two years in manufacture. Maruku will not have made 70,000 guns in two years. <laughs> Now, I've got to be honest with you, this serial number ending in a one, I feel was a one-off gun. Now, until somebody comes back to me with Maruku factory records, I'm going to stick with that, basically. Mm -hmm. The reason that I say I feel this is a one-off gun is because we've got the parallel comb on it, where most of the Marukus that I've ever looked at have had a rotisserie or a hog's back comb on it. Yep. So, also, if we can look, Paul, at yep. the ribs. Yep. So, although these two guns are on the original Maruku serial number system before, 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 come on, Brian, before Browning had their input and we started to get the, the letters you'll start to see that this has got a wider rib on it, okay? Yep. We've got a narrow, narrower, it's not narrow, a narrower rib on this. And with this, it's trying to emulate file cut ribs, basically. Yep. This is Maruku's style of rib manufacturer, basically. It's wavy lines. It's very nice. Yeah. It's nicely done. Very nicely done. So you will start to see the... Browning influence, this rib that's on this one, Paul, you can find on Sitori's, 325's, 425's, and even some very early 525's. So this gun being 1975, as I've said, the the Browning Maruku history, and I read it again last night, vague, hmm. vague is, is an understatement, basically. We've got fours and five year gaps in production not so much production but in years that things happened but we were thinking 75 that's when browning started putting a bit more of their stamp on no 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 it's 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 a bit backwards and forwards paul to be honest with you what i was reading last night said that browning started to have an influence in 1966 Huh. They didn't start taking delivery of guns till about 1973, 74. That was Browning's 
Sitori, that wasn't the Maruku side of things. That yeah. is why I feel the Browning Corporation own the Maruku, own Maruku outright, basically, because there's too many, there's too many variations on a theme that are leaning more towards the Browning side of things than they are towards the Maruku side of things. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to say anything other than what a beautiful gun these are. Now let's roll, let's roll the gun over, Paul, and let's look at the wear the gun has sustained in 73, 83, 93, 2003, 13, 40, 48 years, something like that. Yep. So this Maruku, now again, what I've missed off a little bit, Paul, is both these actions are a type four action, okay? Yeah. Now, anybody that looks more than occasionally at Maruku pictures will see that there's a lovely website out there. It's got a hell of a lot of information. Would make the would make the Browning records look Browning's rundown look a bit poor, really. But have a search and you'll find it. So can you see that this has got its original black chrome finish on it? Yeah, let's zoom into it. Yeah. Now, that gun is, we'll say, potentially 45 years old, Paul. And when you look closely at it, it's still like a mirror finish. Yeah. What impresses me is how nice did that gun look when it left the factory in 1975, 1973. You will also see. Let's get me. Let's get me turn screw out, mm -hmm. and I will show people. You will also see between these two guns that this one has got more engraving here. There, can you see? Yep. So we've got more engraving here than we've got here. That's not to say, and th this is how close you have to look. There's not to say that there's engraving in different places there's just more of it in yeah. certain places so it's got to filled it out a little bit more filled it out a little bit more also what we've got here if you look the engraving here comes it's difficult to measure paul but that's going to be a quarter of an inch yep oh, three eighths of an inch something like that if i had a ruler and measured it but i ain't that interested to be honest with you you can just see well, if we move over to this gun, which is the earlier gun, which yeah. by all rights should have more engraving on it, hasn't, has it? No. So you no. can see, and this is what the videos are all about. They are trying to put the guns alongside each other. Now, The only bit of engraving that does look different is just by your barrel flat share. All the other engraving is like just filled out a little bit more, but that... Yep. It's the only bit I've noticed that was completely different. That's different. So this this one, as I said, is a superior grade. This will be a slightly higher grade again because you've got slightly more engraving on it. Might have only taken the man another 20 minutes, but it still took more time. Well, to show you that they vary so much, Paul, if we come back here to the trigger guard, yep. all right, you'll see that these little accents on the sides of the trigger... On this one, yep. if we come over to this one, you'll see how much thicker and yeah. how much more of it there was, basically. Yep. Now, it's also silly little things, Paul, like the bottoms of the barrel flats. This engraving here and this engraving follows a very, very similar theme. Yeah. Okay, between the two of them. Very, very similar theme. Also, we've got on the bottoms of your barrel lumps here, again, they follow a very, very similar theme. Yep. The reason that I'm pointing this out to you, Paul, to the people that are watching the videos is, as I keep saying, when we move on to some stuff that will knock your eyes out, mm -hmm. you, you have to look at the differences between the two of them before we can go to the high-end stuff. So what we've got here, as they vary... You've got the same theme on the four end iron, yeah. but on this gun, it's broader. When I say broader, 
it follows the same style, it's just, just broader, just yeah. bigger, to cover more scroll, basically. One of the other things, as I mentioned, this is a Type 4 action. This is a Type 4 action. They're both Type 4 actions in the fact that we've got V-spring mainsprings in here, and we've got parallel, parallel firing pin strikers on here, both barrels. Maruka have decided at this point that V-spring designs are not a cost-effective way to do spring technology in so-called a modern gun. Bearing in mind the number 77 Browning that we had the other day, which was 1930-ish, had coil spring main springs, coil spring ejector springs, coil spring top lever. This gun being 1975, 1973, Maruka are only just starting to move over to coil spring designs. So you've got V-spring main springs, and as I said, you've got parallel, uh, yeah, parallel striking firing pin order. But you've got your top barrel pivots on the top of the action, and your bottom barrel pivots on the bottom of the action to get a parallel strike on the gun. What are the other things that I was hoping to point out to you? What was the other things? So yeah, type four action. Yeah. Take the barrels off. I'm not going to take these actions apart, Paul, because if you go back to the earlier Maruku video, you will see this gun. Yeah. You will see this gun, and you can see what the mechanical internals look like, and you can also see that this gun. I'm telling you, is is exactly the same inside mechanically. I'll put a link to that video in the description for the people who see that one. Also, Paul, because changing the firing pins on some over and unders in the past has been a little bit difficult, what Maruku have done, and to get access to the back of the firing pins, Paul, you have to take the hammers out of both these guns. Yeah. So what? Maruku has done as they put this set strikers in both guns. So basically you take the firing pins out the front of the action, not the back of the action. What you will see between these two guns is you've got a three pronged, I believe it's on the let me have a look. <laughs> on the earlier gun I believe we've got a three pronged disc set striker. Yep. And on the on the on the later gun we've got a three three pronged and on the earlier gun we've got a two pronged yeah now the purpose of showing people this is i'm showing them how close they have to look to see the differences between the guns also somebody asked me or somebody put in the comments about a brief history on the marukus and a and a, an idea of what what marukus are collectible the earlier the Maruku, the better the condition, the more collectible it is. That isn't to say it's ever going to be truly collectible because of the stigma that surrounds the Maruku product. I suppose As being collectible and being valuable is that's where they're going to be different now. Oh, Paul. Some of the older Marukus are going to be collectible, but Paul, not Paul, Paul. necessarily. I've got, <laughs> I've got two Marukus specifically that are so, so unusual, they, they transcend, transcend value because they're one-off. They are absolute factory custom stuff, okay? The whole purpose of these videos is to show people Marukus, to show people Maruku quality. Their quality is every bit as good as a Browning B25, every bit. It's not better. But what, what we're trying to do is show you that there is a there is a link up between the Brown in the Waruku and the Winchester factory somewhere along the line. These guns are, are far too close to be just coincidentally similar. Yeah. Okay. As I said in one of the earliest videos, I would very much like to put every Brown in B25, every Winchester 101, every Nico every Maruku I've ever had on the floor and show people every one. I can't do that. What I've got is I've got a very good memory and I remember most of the guns we've had and I remember what is unusual about them. So, again, it's it's another little video 
and it's the engraving pole it's the engraving we're looking for yeah so as i said somebody asked about marukus the earlier the gun the better the condition that's what you're looking for am i looking for am i looking for maruku 6000s 7000s when they went to coin finish silver actions when browning were at the helm telling maruku to push the price down get the price down no i'm not no i'm not not at all am i looking for grade five marukus with fabulous wood no not at all mk 60s mk 70s mk 38s no no what we're looking for is we're looking for very very early marukus between 19 1959 and 1975 basically that is the era that i am looking for why because the gun the the marukus themselves because they've had a stigma most that you see will be in this fairly well worn condition now this gun here paul this worn gun yeah this has been a club gun at a local shoot for the last 30 years of its life hmm. and it still works perfectly it ejects it shoots mechanically it's perfect it's loose and it's it's lived a life but mechanically it still works i could show you much better so-called better quality guns that will give up the ghost after 10 years 12 years stuff with real good names on it these marukus are vastly vastly underestimated in their quality, their reliability, and what they are. They are beautiful, beautiful guns, and I'm trying to show people what we get, what we have, but as I say, I am not an expert. I've got no magic book with everything written in it. You have to take what you can get when it comes, and you have to filter out and make your own mind up of what, what is fact and what is fiction, basically. What I am showing in the videos, I am showing fact. Yep. I was told by a very old gunsmith a long time ago, the gun cannot lie. The gun is what the gun is. Paperwork, uh, serial numbers, they can all get lost to the mist of time. The gun itself cannot lie. So look at the gun, and we've, we've done... We've done a little 25-minute, 30-minute video here, Paul. More than anything, if you watch the videos and you want to talk about Marukus or you've got something that you feel is, is particularly unusual, please ring me. Yeah. Please talk to me. Send me some pictures. Come into the shop. The, these are videos to talk to like-minded people about good quality guns. All right? Sorry to bore everybody. Thanks very much. Talk to you again.